So it's a pretty big ask, the helium-3. It may not be there. Any of it does building fusion reactors, and you know, even on Earth, is pretty hard, let alone on the moon. But there is, of course, another possible energy source, which is water or hydrogen, to be precise. That's right. And the best way to find it is in ice frozen on the moon. And Chandrayaan-1, when it imaged the moon back in 2009, found lots of areas where it thought that there was water absorption. By looking at specific spectral bands, as we talk about in the stars, they were able to see the signatures that were associated with water ice. Now, we're not talking about oceans on the moon, obviously, because there's no air, so they'd all just boil away immediately. Um, even sheet ice, we're not talking glaciers nope. here. We're talking microscopic grains of ice mixed in with a rock, presumably. Yeah, it's kind of like, kind of like a, an icy, muddy rock that's right on the moon. You're not going to just be shoveling ice on the moon, and all of a sudden you can make a drink. But this hasn't been the only discovery. In fact, just recently, the Flying uh, Observatory Sophia found other what we call hydroxyl components on the moon, and in particular, found it not in the shady areas of the South Pole, but in the sunlit areas on the surface of the moon. Yeah, so the, the idea of looking at the polar craters is there are some craters there because they have high mountains around them, never ever get sunlight. So I think the idea was that you might get comets over the last billions of years that have crashed into the moon. Uh, comets contain a fair bit of water ice, as we talk about in the planet section of the course. Now on Earth, if something crashes in, it would just make a crater and a mushroom cloud. But on the moon, because there's no atmosphere, it will blow particles right. that might go all the way around and some of it might land in these polar craters and then because it's so cold that it might condense and no sun just stays there and there's a fair bit of evidence that polar craters do indeed contain yep. water ice from things like uh, Chandrayaan and various other satellites but this is not the cold areas no that's right this is in the sunlit areas and as we talk about this you know you can get temperatures of over 150 degrees celsius on the moon so how do you get something that's still there that could normally have melt or dissipate. Well, how do you? Well, this is one of been in the big questions. When they looked at it, so what we're looking at here is the red is, in, is data measurements per latitude of water from Chandrayaan 1, and in black is from Sophia. And what they noticed in particular is that towards the middle latitudes, the South Pole's way over there, the equator's way over here, is that, well, there's actually quite maybe a little bit more water than they previously thought. Maybe actually there's different, we call hydroxyl components. Maybe not just H2O, maybe it's OH, maybe it's OH minus. Some of the different families of H2O. So this is not obviously looking at rocks, it's look, um, you're actually looking at it from a distance. What you're finding is some spectral signature caused by OH bonds. You don't know what form they're in. All you know is there's some hydrogen chemically combined with some oxygen, but whether that's in water or some other chemical, almost certainly some other chemical, because it's going to be far too hot for it to actually be water there, but that doesn't matter. That's we just care hydrogen. about the, that's right, we just care about the There's hydrogen. There's plenty of oxygen, it's the hydrogen that's short supply. That's right, and in, as you said, these measurements had to come from Earth, but in particular, a specific part of Earth. So Sophia is a t four meter or two and a half meter telescope in a retrofitted Boeing 747, and it's flying in the atmosphere because when you look at into the infrared colors, there's what we call a lot of water vapor here. So water in the atmosphere blocks these colors of light. It also means if you're looking for those exact same signatures on something else in space, you're not gonna see that from the ground. So the trouble is you're looking through our own atmosphere, which is laden with water vapor. So yes, there's water vapor, but probably from Earth. <laughs> yes, so you really want to be above most of the water vapor in Earth so you can see any faint signatures from the moon. And luckily, if we look at it as a function of altitude, so once we get to about eight to 10 kilometers, the amount of water vapor really starts to drop off. And that becomes quite convenient because that's the height of Boeing 747 can fly at. So you can see things here that you can't just simply see from the ground. And this is one of that big discoveries that by looking at the moon through new techniques, maybe there are signs of this precious hydrogen and oxygen. And this is why we care about it. Yeah, so you've got uh, your water, you shovel up your slushy, muddy, um, melt it and pour the water up the other side. How does that give you power? And a really cool technique called electrolysis. Simply put, if we have a positive and negative charge or an anode and cathode, we have charge going through the positive side, goes through the water, creating oxygen. The charge comes out to the negative side, creating hydrogen. Now, this isn't just voodoo. 
there's actually a really cool chemical reaction that when you have positive charge going through the positive side or the anode, if you take your two hydrogen and oxygens, that electrical charge creates an effect that produces oxygen and some hydrogen. Also creates some electrons, but you know, yeah. we don't really care about that. Except those electrons continue on with this hydrogen you make to make hydrogen gas. So the idea would be that you would find whether it's hydroxyl rocks or this water ice, and then you'd use power from, say, solar cells or a helium three fusion reactor or right. a more conventional uranium reactor to split it up, and then you've got hydrogen, and hydrogen's a rocket fuel. And you have oxygen to breathe, and you have things to mix. So all of a sudden now, you have your fuel and energy sources that you can use to really make staying on the moon really effective and now give you the next goal of what you're going to do with it. And the exciting thing about electrolysis is not only all of these things, but it's actually pretty simple to do.